I plead the blood of Jesus over this life in Jesus' name. I decree that every demon that tries to go through the airways and disconnect the internet, I decree that those demons will be suspended in the air in Jesus' name. I loose the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth over this TikTok live. All right. I think I should be good now. I think I should be good. All right, good afternoon. No, 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 no. Um, Asia, that was not the devil. <laughs> I had to take, <laughs> I had to do something very important and I had to get off. So no, it wasn't the devil, sis. All is well. <laughs> no, that wasn't the devil. That was me. Um, I had something I had to do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I can understand why you thought that for sure, because it's like always something, right? Um, hey, how you doing? Um, yes, yeah, so I'm gonna try to get you know allow people to join. Um, before I start. All right. So good afternoon. Good afternoon. Have some very powerful revelation. Yes, I'm back. I had to take care of something really quick. And I forgot about it. So that's why I, I got off. I'm like, oops. So yeah. But all is well. Hey, Miss Genesis. Hey, how are you, Alyssa? Good afternoon, Barbara. Yes. How was everybody's weekend? How was everybody's weekend? Did you all have a good weekend? Restful, that sound good. Um, how you doing, Jacqueline? Good afternoon, Noel. You said relax, that's good. It feels real good in Texas. You said in the membership it was amazing. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. We we I'm talking about baby, listen. So many demons got evicted this weekend. Good afternoon. So many demons got evicted this weekend. Seriously. I had to reread the, the dream. Amazing is the understatement. Hey, you are right. Um, yes, I had to reread her your dream. Oh my god. That dream was just like, I'm like, what? God showed her all them demons being bound. God literally showed her all those demons being bound. I'm like, what? God revealed it to her. Show her all those demons being bound with contracts that they had to tear up. And I told y'all when y'all joined this membership, I said, a lot of you all are going to see. Yes, it was mind blowing. A lot of you all are going to see all these contracts that's, that's going to be tore up. Literally, all, do you know what the Holy Spirit revealed to me? Um, and I'm going to give you all some. I was going to talk to you all separately, but I know some of y'all on here. The Holy Spirit revealed to me that on those contracts, on those contracts, listen to me, y'all. On those contracts, some of the stuff that happened, um, the enemy had planned on. I'm trying to figure out a way to say this. To cause a lot of harm to your children. I'm going to put it like that. Okay. Sex trafficking. Okay. Prostitution. Um, unaliving a lot of people. This is the stuff that was torn up. Literally. Okay. And so I was going to talk to you all about the. Because you all don't realize how powerful that dream was that she had. That dream was very powerful. 
So this is why so, this is why you all are testifying the way that you are. Right. This is why you are receiving so much deliverance. Um, the things that would take you years. God is it's an acceleration on anything that I do. No flex is just accurate. <laughs> no flex is just accurate. There's an acceleration. And so many generational curses was broken over the weekend. This is why a lot of you all had visions of seeing old people. Oh, man. Hey, listen, when I tell you this weekend. Yeah, very powerful. So, yeah, I'm actually going to break that dream down, but I'm going to break it down to the members only in a different way. I'm not going to break it down the way that I would on TikTok, but I am going to break it down in a different way. Just so the people that follow me for real can actually know what how powerful of a dream that was. And so the nooses around the necks, that's also something else um, I got a revelation on. Very powerful. Very powerful. So, yes, God was showing out. The only reason, if you, if, if anybody on here from the membership and you fasted with me yesterday, the only reason why you didn't get breakthrough was because of you. That's the only reason why. It had nothing to do with any, it had nothing to do with God. It had everything to do with your dishonor, your heart posture, not ready to receive, and a lack of faith. Period. Period. Because too many people was testifying yesterday. It to me, I think it's mind blowing for anybody to even have the thought to fall asleep while you're fasting, especially because I told you all to do something every hour on the hour. I literally said do something every hour on the hour. OK, so I just want to say that. And so um, that dream, I'm going to break it down for you all in the members um, only because, yeah, that was very, very revealing and powerful. Yeah. So, so we're going to talk about spiritual infidelity. I'm going to talk about spiritual infidelity on here for probably like 20 to 30 minutes. Um, I'm going to talk about spiritual infidelity and I'm going to open up with a scripture. It's going to be numbers 14 and 33 numbers. It actually took up the whole hour. What's what, what you say? It actually took up the whole hour. You talking about the deliverance yesterday? Um, Numbers 1433. I'm, a, I'm going to read this scripture to you all. Numbers 14 and 33. Your sons shall be wanderers and shepherds in the wilderness for 40 years and they will suffer for your unfaithfulness. Did you hear what God said to them? God said that, that, that the kids are going to suffer for the parents unfaithfulness. Let me let me let me pause. Let me help you out. Help y'all out. Yesterday I had the opportunity to pray for an amazing young lady. I believe she lives in Africa, but I do know she's African for sure. Yesterday I prayed for her because God led me to pray for her. Um and so we were on the call. Now you all know if you've been following me that reading and prayer I use the whole hour. Yes. So if you all have been following me for any amount of time, you all know that I talk heavily about repentance. So when I began to pray and ask the Holy Spirit, is there anything that she needs to repent for? You know what God told me? All of her problems are generational. He didn't find no fault in her. He did not find no fault. She was blameless before the father yesterday. But what was not blameless was her ancestors. Her ancestors were into idol worship. Her ancestors were into prostitution. Her ancestors was into slavery. Her ancestors was into child sacrificing. Yeah, she had a noose around her neck in the spirit realm. She had an actual noose around her neck in the spirit realm. And so when I began to decree that that noose be broken off of her neck, she started coughing. Baby, she was coughing up a lung. Her hair was hot. She took her hat off. She was going through it yesterday. Okay. And so this is why I talk to parents all the time about being negligent. Let me just school you real quick. These generational curses are not going to leave your kids. So if you let me give you a case in point. If you in a bad marriage, you yelling and cursing and your husband is going upside your head and kicking your butt, your daughter or your son is going to do the exact same thing to his wife or the daughter is going to be beaten by the man. Just so you know, this is how generational curses broke. Uh, um, our, um, this is how generational curses go. Let me calm down because I'm getting way too excited. Every time I start talking about God, I get way too excited. Let me calm down. Let me take this thing a little slower. Okay, so this is how this works. 
So you have to be the generational curse breaker. You have to be the one that say, you know what? Um, I'm going to get out of this toxic marriage or I'm going to fast and ask, you know, and fast and see if we can come to an agreement. OK, if we could come to some type of agreement, because let me explain something to you. If you are married to somebody and they are not willing to change and they keep going upside your head. I mean, that should be a no brainer. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. Right. So take that into consideration. When we're talking about generational curses, when we're talking about breaking um, generational curses in our bloodline, what you have to understand is that none of this stuff is going to break on its own. God needs your participation. Did you all hear what I said? So God needs your participation. So, for example, what I just read to you all, God told them in Israel, hey, check this out. Because of your unfaithfulness, your kids are going to suffer because of your spiritual infidelity. When you all get the opportunity, please read numbers. You need to read all the numbers. Baby, numbers is blessing my entire soul because I can identify with Moses so well they used to come at moses all the time they used to come at moses all the time you know how people be worried about what you got going on worried about everything case in point numbers chapter 12 miriam was worried about moses marrying a Cushite woman why do you care who moses married why does that have anything to do with you? It upset God so much. He actually placed the curse of leprosy on her for seven years because of her. I mean, seven days because of her dishonor. Hmm. Very interesting. I'm going to leave that alone. But it is important that we understand what spiritual infidelity means. So if you are, if you are a man. And you're physically abusive to your wife. Please understand that that did not just go away. You need to change your patterns and your behaviors. And you need to go very deep. You need Jesus and you also need a therapist. And yes, I said that. At least for six months. You need to figure out why you think it's okay to put your hands on any woman. Besides giving them a hug. Or helping them with the groceries. In Jesus name. Because if a man put his hands on me baby. He going to be real sorry. <laughs> he going to be real sorry. That's all I'm going to say. I'm just like Charleston White. I ain't met nobody that can that can cut through some mace. Because Charleston White. He'll tell you. He'll make you in a heartbeat. Baby I'm macing that face up. You hear me? <laughs> you going to be sorry and blind. When I'm done with you. But anyway. What I'm going to say is. Is that you all need to do an assessment of your family. You got to start with the family. Okay? So if you see a lot of people in your family that go to jail, guess what that is? I'm about to school y'all real quick. I'm about to school y'all real quick. Do you not realize that if you have a bunch of family members that are incarcerated, guess what spirit that is? Guess what spirit that is? It's not a spirit of incarceration. It's a spirit of poverty. Mind-blowing. That's a spirit of poverty that is attached to your bloodline. When you got a gang of people in your bloodline that keep going to jail, that's poverty. That needs to be broken. It's a generational curse. Why all your uncles and your cousins constantly going to jail? No, 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 no. That's the spirit of poverty. That's what that is. That has to be broken. It's generational. If you have a lot of people in your bloodline that keep um, experiencing this. If there's a lot of women in your family with issues when it comes to um, their body. A lot of hormonal imbalances, right? All of those types of issues. These are spirits of infirmity. Can I get real deep with y'all yet today? So there was a lady yesterday. Um, the Holy Spirit revealed to me. Now this is about to get very interesting right? She has a gluttonous spirit due to obesity. Now, there's a lot of times where somebody who's inexperienced will go based off a deliverance manual. You can't go based off a, off a deliverance manual when you are serving to Jesus Christ. Because if you are, the Holy Spirit is going to instruct you on what to pray, how to pray, and what spirits to call out of this person. Do you know this lady had a spirit of gluttony on her from overeating? And it is Jesus Christ. My um is eating up her finances. 
I hope y'all heard me because somebody called me. I'm going to say that again. She had a spirit of gluttony on her due to her obesity and overeating. So God told me to cast out the spirit of gluttony. So where you might be casting out a spirit of poverty, the spirit of poverty, the demons, they sitting back cracking up laughing like, ha, ha, ha. She think that's the spirit of poverty. And that's not even it. It's a spirit of gluttony on this woman. And I ain't going nowhere because she ain't got the right spirit. Yeah, it get deep. This is why you need the Holy Spirit. This is why there should never be any such thing as a deliverance manual. That is foolishness. There is no manual to the Holy Spirit. There is no manual to the Holy Spirit in Jesus name. No, there isn't. You're not going to tell me that. I'm not smart enough to know this stuff, but I know when I when I start calling out them demons, she was crying and coughing. Yes, sir. So this is why I, I talk about all these things. All of these things, all of these things are generational. You ain't the only person in your family that overeat. I bet you your mama overeat. Everybody overeating is eating up your finances, destroying them. When you go through cycles of defeat, nobody in the family ever gets married. And when they do, the man is either abusive or crazy. And then you get all these spirit spouses attached to you. Where's all this coming from? Spiritual infidelity. Because you do know that we are the body of Christ. You all know that, right? You all know that Jesus Christ is the head. This is biblical. I didn't come up with this. This is what your father in heaven said. We are the body of Christ. It's not attached to a church. It has nothing to do with a church. We are the body of Christ. I'm going to pull that scripture up and read it to you. So you all have an understanding. Do I have that scripture pulled up? I think I do. Okay, 1 Corinthians 12 and 27. Now you are Christ's body and individual members of it. So each and every one of us are individual members of the body of Christ. Jesus Christ is the head. So we already should know that, right? So we belong to Christ. We are the body of Christ. So many of you have been cheating on Christ. You have been cheating on Jesus for years. So what am I telling you? We already know what infidelity means. When it's spiritual infidelity, do you know what the Holy Spirit told me? Do you know what the Holy Spirit told me? I said, Holy Spirit, can you give me deeper revelation? Um, please don't nobody ask me no questions while I'm teaching. That is so disrespectful. I don't know anybody that will go to a church and start randomly asking the pastor anything. You sit back, you take them notes, or you just be in your phone and not paying attention. I am actually speaking. Let's have some honor for what I'm saying. All right. That's all I'm going to say. Please don't ask me no questions because I'm on a different topic. All right. So the Holy Spirit revealed to me clear as day. He said, many of the people are cheating on God. This is what he said with the devil. Literally, this is what he said. And I said, can you give me revelation concerning this? And then he began to call off all of these sins, fornication, adultery, gossip, slander, accusers of the brethren, unforgiveness, bitterness, hatred, malice. Ooh, I can go on. <laughs> Baby, I can go on. This is what spiritual infidelity is. All of us have cheated on God because we are the bride. We belong to Christ. And so this is what you do when you commit all these heinous acts. When you are addicted to pornography and you begin to watch animal pornography, right? And you watching same sex pornography. When you doing all of these things, you partner with all of these dark spirits. You bringing all of these spirits into your home. That's why you get all these viruses on your phone. You got to close out all these apps. Why do you think that is? You should not be watching that stuff at all. You should not be watching those things. Do you not know that a lot of those women that are on those sites, they're actually being held against their will? These women are actually being held against their will. I posted a very powerful TikTok that I thought would do really good and people would post it, but they did it because nobody cares to talk about certain things. Nobody talks about all of these kids that keep going missing in Ohio and all these different places. It is really sad what's happening. 
Nobody is interceding for these children. And so God literally told them in numbers, he said, because let me read that again. He said, your sons shall be wanderers and shepherds in the wilderness for 40 years and they will suffer for your unfaithfulness. And then it says in parentheses, spiritual infidelity until your corpse are consumed in the wilderness. This is how God was not playing with them at all. Baby, if you read the Old Testament, you will start being real fearful of God. If you read the Old Testament, you because like God wasn't playing at all in the Old Testament. <laughs> he wasn't playing at all. So what am I talking about here? Do an assessment on your bloodline. Do an assessment. Look at all of the people in your bloodline. Think about all of the stuff that was that has gone on in your family. What am I saying to you? Are there a lot of divorces in your family? A lot of failed marriages in your family? A lot of witchcraft in your family? Okay, all of these things. A lot of people not being able to succeed and get ahead. Everybody pretty much doing the same thing, right? All a lot of people going backward. These are all generational. Okay, these are all generational. It's a pattern. It's a pattern. Definitely alcoholism, 100%. That runs rampant in most families. Alcoholism and drug abuse. If you got a ton of family members that's addicted to drugs and alcohol, that's a generational curse of addiction. Okay? Now, one of the things that I've taught and I te I've, I've done TikToks on this. I've done so many teachers on this, but people don't listen to me. Um, only but maybe like 10. But Galatians 3 and 13. Galatians 3 and 13 is an extremely powerful um, Bible verse. Because Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for you, for it is written. Curses everyone that hangeth on a tree. Do you not understand how powerful that is? That's so powerful. That is so powerful. Christ redeemed you from the curse of the law. I want y'all to really start dissecting the word of God and just seeing how powerful and how loving the God that we serve is. He became a curse for us. So you shouldn't be under any curses. The only reason why you're under a curse right now is because of your lack of relationship with the father. The only reason why you're suffering the way that you are is because you want to um, your answers to come through a leader. You don't want to study to show yourself approved. You don't want to meditate on scriptures. And then when the answer is sent to you, she got tooth gems, locks. She got blonde hair. You worried about her Instagram posts. You worried about everything but yourself. Meanwhile, you ain't got nowhere. You actually don't got worse. Then when you dwindle off and try to go link with another with another church because you become a church hopper, it gets worse for you. Because when you link up with them, you're going to end up with a false a teacher. And then they're going to be begging you for money every week, right? And then you're going to start partnering with them because money is an agreement. So when you give money to a dead church, you're going to reap a dead reward. You reap what you sow. So when you sow it into these dead churches, that's why you're not getting anything. Because you're saying, I'm okay with partnering with a pastor who has a spirit of greed on him and he care more about a dollar than he do my soul. But when the person that comes that cares about your soul and will snatch your edges and get you together, you offended. You stay offended and bitter and angry and upset. But yet you constantly seeing me testifying every single week, but nothing in your life is changing. In fact, it got worse. Then you got family members. You got co-workers doing witchcraft against you. Now you need all this prayer. You got snot running down your nose. You crying and you need assistance. All because you did not want to take correction from God. This is the only reason why you're under generational curses. Literally. You're not under generational curses because of anything but yourself. If you are negligent as a parent... Please understand that your kids are going to suffer immensely because of your lack of relationship with the father. You said, hi, sister Genesis. I wanted to apologize. I'm sorry. Who are you? I'm not being funny, but I don't think I know you. The name <clears throat> kind of seems familiar, but I'm not sure. But apology accepted. 
Yeah. Des, I don't know who you are and what are you referring to a prayer call? I've never talked about a prayer call. I'm confused on what you're asking. <laughs> oh, this Jocelyn. Oh, wow. I wanted to say I'm sorry because I dishonored you and I will tell you. Oh, yeah, you definitely did. Okay. Amen, Jocelyn. Amen. All right. Now I remember you. Yeah. How's life been treating you? All right. <clears throat> I haven't heard from you in a long time. Very interesting. <clears throat> okay. That's that's interesting. I thought you just went away. Amen. So 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 I want you all to understand something. Um your responsibility. Let me just say this. Your relationship with God is your responsibility. I'm going to say that again. Your relationship with God is your responsibility. You should never listen to a leader that tells you that you need to come to them before you go to God. Let me just say that. You should never listen to a leader that tells you that. Those type of leaders you should run from because they, they think that they're God. They want to be God in your life. There's only one God. You need to stay away from those type of leaders. Okay. Your relationship with Christ is going to be predicated on your submission and obedience. That's what it's going to take. So you can't say, um, especially if you follow me at any type of capacity, baby, I guarantee you, you learned something. I guarantee you, I taught you about some type of consecration or something that you was doing off. I don't care if it was just one live that you listened to. Please understand that. Okay. Never listen to any leader that exalts themselves above God. Never follow leaders like that. Okay. Even with certain things, I wouldn't even feel comfortable telling them, okay? I wouldn't even feel... So, for example, um, I heard a, pa a pastor say that his congregation should come to him about marriage. I don't believe that. I do not believe in that. What I believe is that that couple, they need to fast and go before God themselves. They're going to be in that marriage, not you. You are not God. You are not supposed to be telling people... You said I post a video of you without your permission. I don't need Jocelyn. I don't even know what you're talking about. I, I'm so confused. Was it like a bad video? I posted a video of you without your permission. This is way back before I met you. I'm sorry. So you posted a video like bad mouth me. I girl, I didn't even know. I'm not being funny, but I don't watch people on TikTok. So I wouldn't have never seen it. Somebody made some videos about me and my son sent it to me. I didn't even look at it. I could care less. Literally. That's how far up I am. But I'm going to be honest. I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I may be, I guess the Holy Spirit is just convicting your heart as to why you're telling me. But all is well. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't even know what you talk. I don't even know what you're talking about. But thank you for telling me. Um, I had no clue. I don't, I don't scroll on social media. <laughs> I don't. I'll go look at Skinbone page on Instagram. I might laugh at a few jokes, a few memes, and then I get off. Literally. I don't I don't scroll. Um So yeah, so um it's so interesting, right? Because like I had no clue that you did a video. <laughs> Y'all be wilder. Don't y'all? But um, so 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 let me get back to what I was saying. So you said that's good advice. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I was going somewhere. That kind of threw me off. <laughs> like you said, they only curse themselves. Yeah, 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 yeah. So definitely. What was I just talking about? Can somebody refresh my memory? <laughs> oh, that's what I was saying. You said, no, no, no. Um, I didn't do a video bad mouthing you. I just reposted a video. Oh, that's not any, that's not, I don't, I'm confused. Now I'm really confused because I just don't know what you, so if you reposted one of my videos, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have even known. I'm thinking you said you posted a, like a video bad mouthing me or something. I don't know. I just know I stopped, like you was like following me and then you just stopped, right? Um, 
But I, I know who you are now. I remember you from Facebook. I remember us praying. Um, you definitely were very offended at a lot of my corrections. I know who you are. So yeah, all is well. I'm not tripping on that. All right. So yeah, this is what I wanted to say. So basically he was like, um, he, he was basically saying that you should come to him. That's not true. That's not true. If you're about to get married, you and that person need to fast before God. It has nothing to do with your leader. And I don't, that's not really, that's not good advice. That's not, that's not good advice. Because you start taking the Holy Spirit and God out of the equation. That's who needs to give you the okay, not your leader. A leader should not be confirming your marriage. Okay. That's what I want to say about that. You need to be going to God. These leaders want to be God in your life. That's not of God. That's not of God. A church is supposed to build you up spiritually. A, a church, when you are under an apostolic, because really a, a church should be for apostolic people and prophetic people, you know, like the real fivefold, not like this foolishness that we got going on. And they're supposed to birth what's on the inside of you um, because many of you, all of us have a great purpose. We have gifts that need to be activated. That's what the church is for. That is what, that's what it's for. It's to build you up. It's to edify you. OK, so that you can spring forth and become who God ordained you before the foundation of the world. OK, so that's what's supposed to happen. All right. So I just want to say that. Um, and so with that being said, you being under these leaders and you are not growing and you're confused as to why. And this is why, because these leaders were called by man and not by God. So I want to speak on this, too. This is something very interesting. Now, many of you, when let me let me just let me just put this out here, right? I did a video last week, and in that video, I talked about a lot of people listening to um, other ministries exposing other ministries. Now, I'm about to get deep with y'all. A lot of you all. And it's going to go, a lot of you, you, this may be revelation for you. You may get it. You may not get it, right? Do you not understand that the reason why you partner with all these bad churches is because of all the curses that's on you? I hope you get that revelation. Do you not understand when you are cursed that you're going to attract nothing but cursed things? Do you not understand that? So, for example, when you have curses on you, it's not possible for you to get a kingdom spouse because you cursed. The Bible says the curse causeless cannot come. So, for example, when my neighbor tried to curse me, it reversed on her. It reversed on her. Yeah. And God revealed to me that she's actually going to go to jail. She's going to get a DUI. She messed herself up for seven years for trying to curse me with witchcraft. Her boyfriend tried to curse me with a voodoo doll. He is in a vegetation state and can no longer walk. She ain't realized that the witchcraft she doing is just not going to work. It's just not going to work. But she won't stop. This is what happens with a lot of witches. They're very wicked. And they become so obsessed with trying to control and be Jezebelic and powerful that they forget that they are not God. God is in control. Can I tell you something? Even if somebody do witchcraft to you, you know God has to okay it? Even if you're not in right standing, do you not know that God will be so merciful on you that if somebody do witchcraft on you, he might, because God know what he placed on you. So he might say, you know what? I'm not going to let this spirit of death come into effect because I know what I placed on my daughter or my son. So I'm going to make them suffer, but I'm not going to allow the devil to kill them. Why would somebody ask me, have I ever read the Testament of Solomon? Why are you asking me that? Have you ever read the whole Bible? Don't ask me that foolishness. All right. So, I, you know, and so I just want to say that God is very merciful. God is very merciful. He will have mercy on whom he wants to have mercy on. That's Bible. Okay. And so I want to say that when you're cursed, everything around you is cursed. When you're cursed, you wouldn't have good judgment. That's why so many people have an issue with me. That's why every other day somebody telling me, I'm so sorry for dishonoring you. Child, I don't even know who you is, but okay. Because let me explain something to you. Nobody can never lie on me. 
Nobody could never lie on me. You all could never say that I um I told you to sow. You can never say I beg. You can never lie on me. You can never say I told you to do anything demonic. Everything that I've ever done to anybody, every prophecy that I've ever gave you, it's what God revealed to me concerning you. You can never lie on me. You can never say I'm demonic because you would be tell you would be making stuff up. It would it would never be anything solid because everything that I do leads you back to Christ. All I teach and preach is fasting, meditating on God's word and studying the Bible for yourself. You could never lie on me. You can never lie on me. You can never call me false. Because if I was false, all of these people wouldn't be set free. I'm one person and over a hundred people testify in my membership. And I'm only one person. I don't have anybody else helping me. Over a hundred people testify. And all I did was a seven day prayer. Baby, the proof is in the pudding. And I'm one person. I don't have a bunch of people following me. Uh, a woman at that. Yeah, a woman. So yeah, so you can never lie on me. You can never lie on me. I could care less. Everything that I've told you about your character, you don't like people telling you the truth. You want me to encourage you. You want to be coddled. You don't want the Bible. You don't want the gospel. I'm not for you. You will love it over here. If you, lo if you love God, you're going to love me. If you love correction and obedience and walking in your person purpose, you're going to love it over here. But if you want me, if you want to be fruitless, you lukewarm, you're going to hate, your, you gonna hate it over here. You're going to hate it. Literally, you are going to hate it. So I just want to say that women don't. I was in a group last month and God gave me revelation. It was a specific lady, um, but her last name was Rodriguez, right? Very dishonorable. She left the membership. I told her, I said, you are very Jezebelic. I prayed for her child fervently for seven days. Her child is supposed to have heart surgery. So she tried to say one day, and we were going back and forth because I told her she was Jezebelic. I told her that she thought it was funny. Um, that Because she, she was sleeping with married men. She cracked jokes about it. She didn't like the way I talked to her. But you, yeah, you need to know that you need to repent for your sins. She tried to tell me that she defended me with her friends. I'm like, why would you need to defend me with your friends? That doesn't even make sense what you're saying. So then she says to me, well, my friends were saying something. And then I'm trying to remember what she said. Oh, this is what the Holy Spirit told me. Because I prayed because I was like, something about this don't sit real with my spirit. And then you know what the Holy Spirit told me? The Holy Spirit was telling me um, specifically that she was talking about me really bad with her co-workers and they were asking her, why are you joining her fast? And you was talking about her really badly. That's what they were saying. But she tried to say, no, I was defending you. I'm like, no, you weren't. You don't need to defend me with your friends. This is just a prayer group. That's what this is. It's like a form of mentorship. Right. So God revealed to me what was going to happen to her as a result of her being dishonorable, which I won't disclose on here. But what I'm just saying is, is that when you are dishonorable, when you speak in all these word curses about me, you can't really do that. You can do that with a lot of these false pastors and these false teachers because they're not servants of God. They belong to the devil. But when it's a true servant, it's a little bit different. <laughs> it's a little bit different. And I say all that to say this. When you have generational curses on you, when you have generational curses on you, everything around you is going to be cursed. You will not make good decisions. Good things are not going to come to you. OK, um, and, and this is going to affect every area of your life. It is so important that you break these generational curses. Your kids are going to suffer. I just read to you all a very powerful scripture. Very powerful scripture. God was not playing with these people in Israel. He was not playing at all. I've talked about how to become a member. It's on, it's on YouTube. I, I really don't respond because I know that many of you are not really sincere. You're not serious. Um, don't have itching ears. Baby, listen to me when I tell you. Be very mindful with being this close to me because I'm going to snatch every edge that you got off. 
So be very mindful of that. If you want real correction, you want the raw truth, you want to really actually grow and move in the things of God, then pray about it and join. But don't just join on a whim because I'm telling you, you a lot of you are not going to like me. So that's all I'm going to tell you. <laughs> be very careful. If you want to stay lukewarm, stay where you at. It's better for you. It is better for you to stay lukewarm. All right. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Stay where you at. All right. But if you really want to grow in the things of God, then yes, you should come over. All right. But I'm also not for everybody. I'm not for people that want to stay lukewarm. I'm not for people that want to be encouraged. I'm not for those type of people. I am not for people that do not want to grow. I am only sent to people that actually want to walk in their purpose and break generational curses and destroy the works of um, darkness in their lives, their, their families' lives, their kids' kids' lives, grandkids. Baby, that's what I'm called to. I'm not called for foolishness okay so that's all i want to say so be very i'm gonna do an updated video on joining my membership because i give i give you the truth all right i have an apostolic calling and anointing on my life so the things that i do is completely different from what many of you used to and i know people use that term loosely that they apostolic they this they that but no i really am all right. So joining and being very close to me is not wise if you are not in right. If you do not want to change, I'm just being honest with you. Really sincerely think about it. But if you do, yes, you could join through YouTube, through my membership. But I want to start coming with disclaimers because a lot of you all. A lot of you all think I'm just going to interpret your dreams and stuff like that and coddle you. That's not it. We have homework every week that I require. We fast, right? So we're doing a whole, we just did a dry fast yesterday. No water, no nothing for eight hours. So this Sunday coming up, we're going to do a one day fast. Okay. All right. So I'm just saying that like it's requirements. This is, I want the obedient, right? The willing, the ones that really want to change. I don't have time for foolishness. And I really want to say that because if you join and then you don't be a part, I'm going to know. I got the memory of an elephant. I, I pay attention. I'm very detailed, very diligent. So, yeah, <laughs> don't even waste your time. Right. So um, I just want to say that for many of you. Right. Do an assessment. Take Galatians 3.13. Take Galatians 3.13. I want you to begin to ask the father to give you revelation concerning the generational curses in your bloodline. I want to speak on something else. Let me put my phone on D and D because baby, my daughter is out of school today. It's Columbus Day, and she has called my phone ninety seven point ninety five times. That happened this weekend. Um, and this is this is this is. Uh, hold on, is it connected? Can y'all hear me? Okay, no, okay, so yeah, you can hear me. All right, because I thought I lost connection. Okay, okay, cool. All right, want to speak on something really, really quickly. Um. I'm trying to think if I should even talk about this because I feel like this is just going to be way too deep. Um, that little witch tried to be funny. And um, did y'all just notice the comment that she just left? She said I had bugs under my skin. That's like a spell. These witches are so silly. So silly. Yeah, no, no, that's a, like she tried to place curse. Like, girl, that stuff don't work on me. Um, So let's I'm going to talk about spirit spouses for a minute, because as I'm on here, um, a lot of you all have spirit spouses. Now, I'm going to say this, right? I'm going to say this spirit spouses and the incubus and succubus spirits are not all the same. No, um, Asia, yes, I'm going to post this on YouTube. Definitely. Definitely going to post this. Um, so incubus and succubus and spirit spouses are not all the same. It's not all the same. And a lot of people um, think that they are. But let me explain to you. A spirit spouse is a part of the marine kingdom. Okay. The marine kingdom is a whole. Man, it's a whole kingdom. That's the best way I can describe it to you. Um, You said it's Desiree in the membership, by the way. Good morning. Oh, okay. Good morning, Desiree. So it's a whole kingdom. 
Okay. Now I'm going to get a little deep, but I'm not going to get too deep. But I just want to, I want to talk about this. Now, two things I want to say. Incubus and Succubus is connected to a lot to um, Incubus specifically and Succubus really likes to attack kids. A lot of kids, a lot of your children are having sleep paralysis. God is revealing that to me. So a lot of your kids are being paralyzed in the realm of the spirit and they can't move. And you have not taught your kids to call on the blood of Jesus. So woe unto you, any parent on here that do not regularly ask your kids about their dreams. Every parent on here, if you're not a witch or a warlock, you need to be asking your kids every week about their dreams. It doesn't matter if they're four years old. They're old enough to talk. They can explain to you enough that you will know. Now me, right? When my diligent self asked the members in my group, I didn't want to know about their dreams. I asked them specifically about their kids' dreams. And there's some few of them that I did not respond to, but I am going to respond, but I was too busy. So I responded to a lot of them. And baby, let me tell you something. The revelation that God revealed to me just off their kids' dreams from their parents was wild. Okay, and so I'm going to say that woe unto you, any parent on here that does not diligently talk to your kids. Your kids are being destroyed in the realm of the spirit already as a result of the stuff that you're doing. Your son screaming in his sleep, baby, that's horrible. Tormenting spirits. Your son is being tormented in the spirit realm. Now, I could tell you about yourself, but I'm not. All right. So anyway, let me just keep talking. In any event, the incubus, succubus, and spirit spouse is not all the same. It's not all the same. All right? So the spirit spouses marry you in the spirit realm. So, for example, this is why you're swimming in water. This is why you might see yourself with men that are unfamiliar to you. And let me tell you how sneaky that is. They'll actually, you'll actually see yourself marrying somebody that you might find attractive, even a celebrity. It's, it's a masquerading spirit and it's a spirit spouse, especially if you see you and this person going before somebody and actually getting married. You have a tuxedo on and all of that. All right. Or they will just have sex with you regularly in the realm of the spirit. You'll have regular sex in the spirit realm. You have a spirit spouse. When you have these spirit spouses, you get demon kids with them. So I'm about to get deep with y'all yesterday. Yesterday, the Holy Spirit revealed to me when I was doing deliverance on the Zoom call, at least 40 of those women on there had spirit kids and some of the men. They had spirit kids. Now, what was funny is it was a particular lady that God highlighted to me. And this was started all of this. I kept hearing the word spirit kids, spirit kids. I'm like, what's a spirit kid? And then I, and then I, you know, what's crazy. I started thinking of back. So when I was taking myself through deliverance, I had a very disturbing dream. This is when I was just getting out of my marriage. I was just getting out of my marriage. I had a very disturbing dream. And it was these two kids that was following me around in this ugly old beat up house. And these kids looked at like little demons. They looked at like little demons. And they was following me everywhere I went. They wasn't attacking me. They was just following me like my kids, like my actual kids. And then I woke up and the Holy Spirit revealed to me that you have spiritual children as a result of the spirit spouse from your ex-husband. Okay, so yesterday when I started praying for this particular lady, because I kind of did a one on one with her. And you know what she told me? She actually said that the night before she had a very disturbing dream of a kid following her around with a distorted face. I said, wow, God. You just confirming, <laughs> like, she just randomly told me this. I told her, I said, I feel like you've had some really strange dreams. Talk to me about some of your dreams. And then that's when she told me. I'm like, okay, God. I, so when I started casting out this spirit kid, she was coughing her butt off. You know what that spirit kid's objective was? Two things, to cause off writers and to destroy her finances. That was what it went. Those were the two objectives because she she has a she has a job where she has to stand up a lot. So she needs her feet and legs to be functioning. Right. She don't need to be having arthritis and she got to stand up for six, seven hours. That wouldn't be good for her. So that was the objective of the two spirit kids. And so here's why I'm telling many of you. So many of you are married. OK, to people. 
you're married to people and your spouse has these spirit spouses when your husband is addicted to pornography there are spirit spouses that can attach themselves as a result of that this is why when people are addicted to this um they always have all these sexual dreams they have very dark erotic dreams okay very dark and erotic dreams and a lot of you all have spiritual children a lot of you all have had dreams like this where you've seen distorted kids in your dream and you like oh my god what is this and the kids look very evil they look very demonic and then they follow you around normally they don't do anything to you they don't do anything to you but they just follow you around some of you all are saying yes exactly these are spiritual children and it's a result of you having spirit spouses OK, and so many of you, I'm telling you, <laughs> listen, I'm talking about God has given me so much revelation. Even while I'm on here, some of you have 10 spirit spouses. Like one of you have 10 spirit spouses. You got all of these, all of these spirits around you in the spirit realm. Very demonic. Very demonic. And then you have spiritual children as a result of it. You have no time to be on social media. But what you should be doing is fasting and getting close to God. That's what you should be doing. Focus less on connecting with a church and learn how to actually focus on God. That's, that's what I'm going to tell you. Focus less on connecting with a church. Focus more on reading the word, fasting, meditating on scriptures. Listen to my content. You don't have to join my membership. Listen to my content and actually start applying what I teach. God is going to blow your mind with the revelation he's going to reveal to you concerning your life. Many of you have spiritual children and spirit spouses on this um, TikTok live. And it is very disheartening. It is very sad. And what's happening is your finances are being destroyed. Now, I'm going to tell you all the other objective of these spiritual kids. A lot of you all are married and your kids are very rebellious and you don't understand why. Many of you have little kids that are already masturbating and playing with themselves. Do you know why? It's a result of the spiritual children. The spiritual children, these are demonic spirits and they're influencing your kids to touch themselves. They're influencing your kids to be very rebellious. Always, listen, there's a problem. When you got a kid that's very rebellious, baby, that's not natural. It is not natural. Okay, even if the if the kid is two years old and they acting uncontrollably, they screaming and all of that, that's not okay. That's a spirit of rebellion. That's why we see it all the time. When you go to the grocery store, you see little Timmy screaming at the top of his lungs and then the mama not doing nothing. No, nah, baby, little Timmy, he need to be placed in the corner. He need to be whooped. Okay, that little, little Timmy got a rebellious spirit on him because of mommy and daddy. All this stuff trickled down to your kids. A two-year-old and a three-year-old should not be masturbating. A three-year-old little boy should not be thinking to touch his private. He shouldn't. Why is this happening to little kids? Why are little kids doing this stuff? Perversion. And a lot of it is connected to these spiritual kids. Children, that's what I'm telling you. So that's the objective. Um, so as I was praying, I had got revelation concerning one of the ladies in my membership. I did not get a chance to tell her this because I just don't feel like she is in a place to receive. I feel like she's already overwhelmed with a lot of things God revealed to her. So I have not told her this, but this is what's on her kids. Yes, but please understand if your child is touching themselves at two and three years old, he, this child has a spirit kid. It's on you and it's affecting your children because that's the objective. Those are the other objective. And so that's why I say to many of you, um, you don't have a choice. You need to break these generational curses off your kids. You don't have a choice. If you want your kids to act right, if you want your kids to serve God, they're just a reflection of you. The way your kids are, I want you all to understand me. The reason why your kids are the way they are is because of you. So while you sitting up here talking about how horrible your kids is, it's because of you. It don't have nothing to do with your kid. That kid did not ask to be here. 
Your, that kid and I. So if you have a child that hates authority, you were rebellious as a child and you didn't break the generational curses off of that child. You saw that that child was rebellious at a young age. It was your responsibility to start fasting and praying for this child fervently. The Bible says that we are to pray constantly. We are to pray continually, fervently, diligent. These are the words that God uses in the Bible. So if it says to be diligent, if it says constantly, this means you need to be praying all throughout the day. Every chance you get. Every single chance that you get. This is why your kids grow up and they, as my mama used to say, calling you loose. Because my mama used to use that term. She'd be like, you acting real loose. This is why your kids acting loose. This is why your kids is doing the stuff they doing. Because you did it. And you didn't break the generational curses off of them. Your, your kids seen you with different men. They seen different men in their house. Yeah, you might be married. But how many, you know what I'm saying? How much stuff did you do before you get married that you never repented for? I don't know why people feel like they're not supposed to repent. A lady even told me something so foolish. She going to say, why, why would I need to repent? I'm not doing that stuff no more. I'm like, it doesn't matter, ma'am. You never repented. You literally never repented. So I'm going to tell you all a dream that one of the ladies in my membership have, and then I'm going to let you go. So she sent me a dream. It was a disturbing dream about her kid. And she said her kid, I'm trying to remember Oh my God, I'm trying to remember. This is so powerful. Because I was, I was, I'm actually gonna post this as a TikTok and just not show her name. But this was a kid, this was a member in my membership. Her kid had a very disturbing dream. Man, I can't think of it. I'm gonna post the TikTok and then I'll break it down in the TikTok. Very powerful revelation. I got so much revelation from this dream. It was crazy. God, you the Holy the Holy Spirit gave me a whole download off this one dream from her son. I think it was her daughter. The Holy Spirit revealed to me that the the okay, so oh, let me say this too. So many of you are not married, but you have children with people. This is this okay, this is what I wanted to say. I can't think of this lady's dream, but I want to tell you all, this is I'm going to give you the meat. I can't think of the dream, but I can give you the meat. She is not married to this man. This is her baby daddy, right? So God started to get, I asked for revelation concerning her baby daddy. Her baby daddy had actually um, forcefully um, forced himself on other women. I'm going to say it like that. He forced himself on other women. As a result of what he did, it's a spirit of rape that she needs to break and come against. Very deep. Because of the stuff that he did. When you have kids with somebody, even if you don't marry them, you still become one flesh. That's what the Bible says. You still become one flesh. So your baby daddy, you need to be repenting for your baby daddy's sins. That's what I wanted to say. That's why I'm going to post this dream that she had because I had to tell her all the stuff, baby. It was some, it was some wicked stuff. It was some wicked stuff that God started telling me that she needed to repent for because you decided to have a kid with this person and become one flesh with this individual. So if you have a baby daddy that's bisexual, there's a homosexual spirit that could be on your child as a result of that. So that's how that works. You, it don't matter because you just got a kid with him and you're not with him. You have to break that stuff off your kids. Whoever you had a kid with, you need to assess your baby daddy. Assess your baby daddy family. Assess the stuff that you see that's going on with your baby father. Because trust me, it's going to trickle down on your kid. You, you have to break these generational curses. I'm going to post her dream. Um, and then I'm going to do a breakdown of it. And yeah, it's very powerful what the Holy Spirit revealed to me. Very eye-opening. But yes, you have to break the generational curses. If you have kids with somebody and stuff like that. If you have kids with a man that sold drugs. If you had kids with a man that sold drugs, scam, do all of that stuff, extortion, you got to repent for all of those things because your kid going to end up being a scammer or a drug dealer and end up going to jail because you release spirits of poverty. So it's very deep. You, you, we really not supposed to just have random kids with people because we really be out here doing anything. You know what I'm saying? Then God got to clean up our mess. We really be out here doing anything. Seriously. I'm not listed as Genesis on YouTube. No, no, I'm not. What made you ask that? Just you just asked that question. Mm -mm. No, I'm not listed as Genesis on YouTube. But yeah, so um, 
So yeah, I just wanted to tell you all that. I'm going to post her dream. Hopefully I can find it and then I'll post it. Yeah, uh, hopefully I can find it um, and then I'll post it and then I'll talk about it. You got to do a lot more than um, what's my YouTube, getting to know him. This is very eye-opening. I never realized how everything is connected. Oh, yeah, definitely. All right, God bless you too. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so um, my YouTube is getting to know him. I'm going to post this on YouTube. Yep, I'm going to post this on YouTube. Um, and I am going to post that dream. I'm going to post that dream. I need to go and find it. I actually want to respond to a few more of the dreams because I had got some revelation, but I got sidetracked. Yep. So that's what I wanted to tell you all. Yes, you need to break the generation curse. I'm a, you know what? I'm going to make a video about this. I, I think I need to make a video because a lot of people aren't married. Um, I don't know why, but you calling me Queen Genesis just don't sit right with my spirit. <laughs> why are you calling me Queen Genesis? <laughs> Baby, I ain't no, uh, <laughs> I'm from Chicago. I, I'm not no, uh, queen. Like, just call me Genesis, baby. You ain't got to do all that. All right. Um, so I'm going to post this on YouTube and I am going to do a video. I feel like I'm going to do a video on this because I think this is really good revelation. And a lot of you all have not broken the generational curses. You need to do so with your kids when you have, when you have children with people. All right. I'm going to post this. I have a crystal in my room, Miss Genesis. Now, why did you just randomly tell me that? You you in a membership. And I told you, you need to repent for witchcraft. I know you got crystals in there. That's why I told you. You didn't show up to the fast. You just ducking and dodging me. You can't duck and dodge God. I don't know what you're so scared of. You act like I'm going to bite your head off. You need to get rid of them crystals. And when I said something to you, you tried to ignore me like you ain't know what I was talking about. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, you just randomly wanted to tell me the truth, huh? On the TikTok live. You probably thought I wasn't gonna see it. <laughs> uh-uh, I'm not doing one-on-ones. No, I'm led by the spirit of God. So if you if you in my membership and then God leads me to, then yeah, I will. But no, I don't read I don't I've never posted about that. I will be doing a um mentorship that I will be launching. Yes, I, I can't wait for the mentorship. Yes. This is going to be very powerful. Um I am in the works of doing my um website. So yes, I'm doing you know that sage is witchcraft. You know this already. Yes. Um we're not gonna ask these same lame questions, okay? Let's stop asking the same questions because we already know the answer to that. All right, you want to talk about witchcraft, you want to try to be funny. No, you know that's witchcraft, all right? You're you need your Bible. You need your Bible, all right? That's what you need. You need your Bible. Yeah, crystals too. Yeah, crystals too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, crystals are not of God. Um Yeah, so I'm going to get off of here and I'm going to let you all go. You all have an amazing rest of your day. Um, I will be posting this on YouTube. I will be posting this on YouTube and I am going to do a couple of videos today. I think I've already done like three, but I really think that this is a good video for me to do. Even if I don't do it today, I will definitely get to it by the end of this week. I really want to post the rest of the testimonies because baby, um, I have not posted all the testimonies and all the goodness and the things that God is doing. I love you too, Lynette. All right. You all be blessed, be encouraged in Jesus name. We will talk very, very soon. My YouTube name is getting to know him, getting to know him. All right. I love you all. Be blessed. Be encouraged in Jesus name.